let's look at a little bit of typing. We kind of talked about economizers. Uh, I'm going to take just a 30 second break right here. I'll pick it right back up. <coughs> Hope that didn't bother anybody too bad, but the old man's fighting a little bit here. So, Chad, we're going to edit this out, and we're going to just start right back in five seconds. Now we'll look at suction piping. Piping is something that we wanted to make sure we looked at, and we covered a lot of pieces of it. But we're talking about cooling towers, so we've got to look at pumps a little bit in the suction pipe. When you do that, keep in mind that the cooling tower aerates water. So the water in the basin of the tower is full of air. It's full of air as you can get it. In fact, the 100% efficient tower would be just full of air. It couldn't take any more. So if I drop the pressure in it all on that water in the base of that tower, air is going to start popping out. So my suction piping has to be taken into consideration the fact that I might have air in it. And how would I am? So suction pipe on the tower, you want your centric fittings on the top of the pipe, flat on top. You want your reducers on the bottom. You want to keep it as straight as you can, and we want straight pipe running into it, velocity down. And a rule of thumb we give everybody is to keep the pressure drop between the tower and the suction flange to five feet. Now you can do what you want to, but it's kind of a rule of thumb. But remember, any pressure drop on that water, you're going to get air out. That's the thing you need to remember. A cooling tower aerates water for a living. A cooling tower aerates water for a living if we reduce the pressure that air is going to come out. So in piping we like 5 to 10 pipe and straight pipe. The little bottom picture shows that air pocket. That's bad. You don't need part of that. That's where the air is going to collect. You get a big bubble of air coming out into the pump. You can take stainless steel shafts on a pump and bring them into it. I've seen an inch and a half stainless steel shaft completely wrung into because of a bubble of air. You can't make the shaft big enough. It's impossible. You got a pump, centrifugal pump, pumps water, not air. You've got to run the load pump in water and you give it a bunch of air. You're just going to tear it out. Anybody's pump. You just will not handle it. So you've got to keep the air out of it. I think this picture is worth a lot. Hope you recognize this picture. It's not your job, obviously. But uh, eccentric square on the bottom. Where should it be? On the top. They had air problems. They had air problems on the suction side of the pump. What did they do? They put gauge tappings in the tops of those little eccentric fittings to get the air out. But you know what? They had a slightly negative pressure and more air went in. They had a daggum nightmare. This is the one I was telling you about that broke the shafts into. And it ain't our fault when you do things like this, guys. You've got to help us out a little bit. You've got to recognize it's not unusual to have slightly negative pressures on the suction side of a pump, and you're going to always have air. So those are two things you've got to deal with, and we can't change the basic laws of physics. Hopefully your jobs never look that way. Here's a typical example of what I was trying to give you. Look at a cooling tower at Myrtle Beach. And we're just going to look a little bit at MPSH. I wish we had an hour on that, but we don't. We've got another uh, YouTube, by the way, if you want to look at MPSH, go on and take a look at it. But here's a cooling tower at Myrtle Beach, no hurricane. Zero PSIG, 85 degree water, and let's just look at a typical piping of a tower. Now, let's, 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 let's assume that the tower is elevated 2.3 feet above the center line of the pump, okay? Let's assume there's 4.6 feet of pressure drop between the tower and the section of the pump. Got that one? Now, I got gauges underneath the tower and a gauge at the pump. Let's turn the pump off. So with the pump off, what would those gauges read? With the pump off, I've got elevation 2.3 feet. I've got a gauge reading positive one pound. And the gauge on the suction side of my pump with the pump off is going to read a positive one pound. Now what happens when I turn the pump on? Well, I've got this friction loss of 4.6 feet. By the way, I think everybody knows this. 2.31 feet makes a pound of water specific gravity one. So when I turn the pump on, my suction gauge on the suction side of my pump is going to become slightly negative. It's going to lose two pounds because of friction loss. So I had a positive pressure of one from the elevation. I lost two pounds running through the friction. 
So the suction gauge now reads a negative one if it's a compound gauge. It's one of my pet peeves. Everybody listening to this, make sure all your cooling towers have a compound gauge. It's not unusual for us to go on a job site and we see gauge read zero because it's not compound. And yet it may actually have a negative pressure, people telling us the pressure is zero. Well, if it's not a compound gauge and you've got a negative pressure, how are we going to know it? So first pet peeve, make sure. So this would not be an unusual situation, would it? Does this problem have, does this cooling tower at Myrtle Beach, does it have an MPSH problem? It does not. Slightly negative pressure, you may get a little air out of solution, but you remember, you're not, remember you were pumping 85 degree water. So what would it take for 85 degree water to boil? Take a real negative pressure, negative one pounds is not going to make 85 degree water boil. Probably a negative uh, 13 pounds, 14 pounds, that ballpark, to get 85 degree water to boil. Bottom line, the available in is 31 feet. There's really nothing wrong with this application. I don't like the negative pressure, but it's not unusual. This is a typical cooling tower, no NPSH problem at all. If you want the rule of thumbs again, leave the suction lines alone, please. Keep the pressure drop between the suction of the pump and the tower to find all over five feet. Please keep it clean. If you've got any valving, put it on the discharge side of the pump. Uh, a little bit on the discharge pipe. And this is another little pet peeve of mine. Call a water leg. And we got a triple-duty valve on the pump here. And I turn that pump off. Where's the water going to go? I hope everybody sees where the water went. And that water leg is trapping the water. So all the discharge piping, all the condenser water piping is full of water with the pump off. So how much water went into the tower? The water went into the tower was in the hot decks of the tower, the fill of the tower, a little bit of overhead piping, but it was not enough to flood the tower. Everybody's happy because of the water leg. You turn the pump back on, you got plenty of water to get everything going again, there's no problem. Now, let's look at a little bit of discharge piping. First of all, you saw the ASHRAE 90.1 2010 man defines the minimum pipe sizes on condensed water piping, so you might as well get used to it. Uh, you do need to allow a little bit for future filing and pipe corrosion. What's the reasonable number? You decide. Five to ten feet safety factor is what I see people normally doing. It is reasonable to assume that an open system like a cooling tower that the piping over is pipe life is going to file some and you will pick up a little additional pressure drop. Uh, if you've got horizontal piping, as we showed you in that drain down thing, make sure there's a water trap or it's below the tower. And we'll look, look, look at that picture again in just a minute. Make sure you've got non-slam center guided check valves on the discharge of your pump. You want to make sure they don't leak back. You've got to make sure you've got good quality check valves. Triple U valves work right here. Install a pipe filling line above the check valve if you're worried about trash so you can keep everything prompt. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.